Numbers in the sixth chapter. In the Old Testament, the book is Numbers, chapter 6. We'll be reading verses 22 through 27. It ought to be familiar to everybody in this room. Right. Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. In the Old Testament, the book is Numbers, the chapter is 6, the verses are 22 through 27. When you found it, you will discover these words. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you should bless the children of Israel. Say this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. I want to talk about blessed and out of favor. All right. All right. Blessed and highly favored. Oftentimes, you can see and hear in the run of a day and not to mention a week, if you ask somebody how they're doing, they're going to tell you. I'm blessed and highly favored. They will tell you that they are blessed and highly favored and they didn't go to church on Sunday. Yes, sir. <laughs> they will tell you that they are blessed and highly favored and then even say good morning to the Lord that morning. Talk, talk, talk. All right. They will tell you they are blessed and highly favored and they just got through cussing their neighbor out. Yes, wow. They will tell you they are blessed and highly favored and have not really spent quality time with the Lord all week long. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I want to lift up this pericope this morning. All right. To let you know that you can be blessed in highly favor. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm excited to know that the Almighty God yeah. right. has a plan for my life. Yeah. Yeah. And that He plans for me to have abundant faith Thank you, Lord. Thank in the midst of all yeah. that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. You may have to excuse me if I'm not uh, homiletically sound where I ought to start off real slow. Okay. And I ought to talk to you about 45% of my message. And then I ought to get excited about 50% of the way and, and leave you in a crescendo. Excuse me if I violate every principle. All right. Because when I think about the goodness of God yeah. and what he's already done for me. The psalmist said, my soul cries out. Yes, sir. And I just can't contain yeah, yeah, myself. So, Brother Richard, I'm going to try to stay with the pattern. I'm trying to stay with the principles of, of herma, hermeneutics as well as homiletics and, and just start off just a little slow and end with a great crescendo. Take your time, God. Right. You. But when I look at the text, I see God is talking. Mm -hmm. Yes. And whenever God is talking, we ought to get excited when God is talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, some of us ought to get excited when God is talking, but other times we ought not want God to talk. You do know the children of Israel got mad with Moses, and, and people get mad with leaders all the time. Therefore, I, I don't get upset about folk getting mad, mad, mad with me as a leader because people always get mad with the leader. Because if we succeed, us succeed. Yes, sir. If we fail, that dog don't preach over there. Just they doing things right. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, somebody is blaming the preacher this morning because the pews are not feet. Uh -huh. If he had have done this, if he had not said that, if he had have said it this way, then folk would come to church. Uh -huh. well, uh -huh. But I'm so glad that I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm, <laughs> I'm so glad that God has a way of blessing me yeah. in spite of what yeah. folk think about me and what, yes, in spite of what folk really says. Because when we look at the text, mm -hmm. they are talking, God is talking, and then he tells Moses, when you go before Aaron and his son, make sure they have a blessing for the people. 
Let me tell you, regardless of how bad things are in the economy, regardless of who's in the presidential office, the man of God ought to have a blessing for the people. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter how high gas get, how low your income become, the man of God ought to always have a blessing for the people. And the people ought to be blessed at the voice of the man of God. Let me just park right here and say, you may not like the way he dressed. You may not, may not like the way he carries himself. You may not like the way he does things. But at the end of the day, God speaks to the man of God in the text. And he says, go and bless the people like this. Yes, sir. Go and bless. Go and, go and put a blessing on them. Go. And let me tell you, we ought to have good news regardless of the bad news. All right. We, we ought to be able to think of something that's good. Regardless of, of, of what's going on around us, we ought to be able to come up with some good news. Yeah, yeah. Yes, when life has given us a raw deal, mm -hmm. when our friends have walked away, when our family members do not support our program, we ought to have something good to say about the goodness of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we find Aaron and his son, these are priestly blessings that they are placing upon the people of God. Mm -hmm. it, they're called the priestly blessing because only the preacher can bless them. Uh -huh. Now let me make sure that I don't get Twitter buzzing right now. Man. Let me make sure that I'm clear. I didn't say only the only way you can get blessed is if the preacher bless you. But when it comes to a priestly blessing, only the preacher can pass out the blessing. All right. Whenever it comes to a, a blessing from the Lord, he can bless you anyhow, any way, any day. When you're all alone by yourself, you don't have to hear the preacher speak in order to get blessed. But what you do have to do is walk with God in order to get blessed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at the text. When we look at the text, we, we find ourselves watching the children of Israel. And these are the, the ones of the Nazarites. The Nazarites, they watched their diet. All right. They had a particular diet, and they were set apart for the use of God. All right. they, they, they were set apart, and they only ate certain foods, and they only uh, dealt with certain things because they sanctified themselves and consecrated themselves before the Lord. You know, every time this, this time of year, right after the Super Bowl, we call for a fast. <laughs> and folks just really get upset with the preacher. Yeah, yeah. Well, you need to know that, that I'm not asking you to fast for me because I can fast for myself. Right. I'm asking you to fast so we can all walk close to God, where we can all get close to him and be a part of what God is already doing. I know you have New, Re New Year's resolutions and you want them to come to pass, but the Bible says you make your plans and you put them before God and ask him to bless them. Yeah. That's why we're having prayer for a whole month. That's why for the month of January every year we have a, a prayer night on Wednesday night. The whole month of January we come, we, we bombard in heaven and talk to God. Yeah. We're consecrating ourselves. We're consecrating the year. We're, we're telling God, thank you for what you've already done. And we ask God to bless us for what he's going to do. Yes, sir. We ought to set ourselves aside to be blessed by God. All right. Now, in the text, the text, the priestly blessing is placed upon the children of Israel. God is saying, when the, when the preacher stands up, he ought to bless the people. Like this. Yes, sir. Have you noticed that before we close every service, we look at each other, but well, we should be anyway, looking at each other and saying, May the Lord bless you. Mm -hmm. May the Lord keep you. Yeah, right. yeah. May the Lord bless you in such a way that his face will shine upon you. Yeah. May the Lord lift up his countenance before you yeah. and give you peace. May the Lord be yeah. gracious to you yeah. and give you shalom. The Hebrew word for peace. Right. When we look at the text, we look at verse number 24. The first thing we see is the Lord. The Lord. Capitalize the Lord. We see the definite article, the or the. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it has to be a definite article is because there is no God like our God. All right. All right. This Lord, this Lord is, is Jehovah God. 
this Lord is the Lord that is the self-existing one. No one created him. He wasn't voted in. He wasn't selected as God. He just always is God because he was God before the beginning began. This word Lord in the Hebrew means the self-existing one. The all-sufficient God. He's God all by himself. He is, he is the self-existing God. He is the eternal God. He's the all-sufficient God. Yes. Note that he's the all-sufficient God, meaning that he's sufficient in himself. All right. He doesn't need another person. He doesn't need another thing. He doesn't need another situation. He doesn't need another event. He is just God by himself. So you're right. I stopped by here on my way to the rapture this morning to tell you, you have the attention of a self-existing God. Yes, sir. He exists all by himself. He, he is the self-existing God. He is the eternal God. And he was here before eternity began. He existed in eternity past. He exists. He will exist in eternity future. He is God all by himself. He is the Lord God. God says to Moses, go and tell Aaron and his boys that when they talk to the people, don't cuss them out. When you talk to the people, don't misuse them. All right. When you talk to the people, do not have them talk about them on sale, yes. but put a blessing on them. Yes, yes. You know, one reason why, and, and I'll say this, one reason why the largest church in the nation is the largest church in the nation. Because every time they walk in the room, the preacher said, it's a wonderful day. The birds are singing. It's a great day in the room. And you can be encouraged and have your blessed life now. Yes. People like to feel good about who God is. Oh, yes. And people like to be encouraged that God can make a way out of no way. And we ought to, as the local preacher would say, we ought to believe that this is our Bible. Yeah. No, you're right about it. We are what it says we are. Yeah. We can do what it says we can do. Mm -hmm. And we can act the way it says we are that. Yeah. That's why it's full. Yeah. That's why it's full because he really don't deal with sin. He, he likes people to feel good. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, a friend of mine said, man, I really feel good today. <laughs> He said, every Sunday I go, I feel good. And we ought to bless the people. Yeah. Yeah. We ought to put a blessing on them every time we come. Yeah. Yeah. But we ought to tell them about themselves yeah. and the God we serve. Yeah. 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 This word bless, it says the Lord. He says, the Lord bless you. Mm -hmm. The word bless means to congratulate you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To kneel down before you. Mm -hmm. To praise you and to thank you. What, what, what Aaron is really saying, the Lord really want to congratulate you yeah. for setting yourself aside, for, 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 for consecrating yourself before the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know you ought to have a spot in the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ought to even have a spot in the car mm -hmm. where you get along with God uh -huh. and talk to him yeah. about who he is. Yeah. You see, the problem is we both go before God when we got issues. We go before God when, when the doctor has bad news. We, we go before God when, when we got more money than we have money. Yeah. We go before God when the bills are high and the funds are low. I'm telling you, you ought to go before God just to say, God, I thank you for who you are. Lord, I praise you for what you have been. Lord, I thank you for how you do things. I know, I know, Lord, that you didn't answer my prayer the way I wanted to answer. But, Lord, I thank you for who you are. Yeah. Yeah. He's the all wise God. He, he knows how to do it when he needs to do it to whom. And it says that God is the God that's congratulating. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can get congratulations from a lot of people. But when I was a boy, it didn't matter how well I performed in society. When I got home, if dad and mama didn't didn't understand, or dad and mama was not in approval, or if dad and mama wasn't pleased, it was all for nothing. Uh, right. Didn't matter what my teammates said. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter what the coach even said. Right. 
But when daddy stood up and he said, make it happen, boy, and I made it happen, then I'm satisfied with what daddy is satisfied with. Let me tell you, God is satisfied with you when you walk with him. God is satisfied with you. He is at the point where he really wants to congratulate you. He's at the point where he wants to praise you. You see, God wants to speak well of us like he did Job. The Bible says in Job that the devil was walking to and fro throughout the whole earth trying to find somebody he could devour, somebody that he could take advantage of. And God, the devil was minding his own business and God stopped the devil. Yes. Have you considered my servant Job? People always ask, Lord, why me? It's because God has sincerity. It's a blessing when God considers you. It's a blessing when God is able to, to be a blessing to you because he knows you're going to be a blessing to him. All right, you don't clap on the But God has considered you, not just any God, but the Lord, God, the self-existing God, has considered you. You wonder why you got them there children you got? The Lord has considered you. No, you can't give them to me. Uh -huh. The Lord has considered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, you can't throw them off on anybody else. The Lord mm. has considered you. I know you want to throw them out the window sometimes, uh -huh. but the Lord has considered you because yeah. He knows you can have. Yeah. 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 He congratulates you. He considers you. Mm. The Lord bless you, and the Lord keep. Mm -hmm. This word "keep" means protect. This word keep means to put a guard around you. This word keeps means to put a hedge of protection around you. All right. People may ask you, how did you survive that? <laughs> you ought to tell them it's the Lord. Yeah. How do you do what you do? And, and how do you handle it with such humility? Humility. You need to tell them it's the Lord. These days, we're all into sports, and we're, we're ready to see the finale, finality and the finale uh, in the Super Bowl. We're, we're ready for it. We, we can't wait, and we, we know that our team is going to, some of our teams have already been sitting on the couch. <laughs> they show a cartoon well, of the last five quarterbacks that well, lost out, uh -huh. sitting on the couch together. Uh, yeah. Then they show Tom Brady laying on the floor in front of the couch. Uh -huh. And each one of them are trying to make fun of the other. But all of them are in the same room. All of them are watching the screen. All of them wanted to play. But the bottom line, all of them are in the loser's quarter. All right. It's just like church folk. We can't point our fingers at anybody else. We can't look down on folk because they don't have the adequate of showers that we have. We can't look down on people because they're not spiritually mature the way we are because we all in the same boat together. We all have fallen short. The Bible says in Romans 3 and 23, we all have fallen short. We all have sinned. Not y'all have sinned, but we all have sinned. We can't look down at anybody else. And the only reason we are what we are, and we're doing what we're doing, and we have what we have, is because the awesome self-existing God has put a guard around us and protected us. Yeah. You know, you know your attitude. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't take but one person to look at you before you fly off to heaven, but the Lord kept you. <laughs> it, they, didn't, they didn't have to call your name. They didn't have to call you a name. All they had to do is, I'm not talking about children. I'm talking about grown folk. Yeah. And I'm talking about grown folk in church. They ask you questions like, what you looking at me for? First of all, you don't end it with for. <laughs> How come you looking at me? And people get all in the shackles because somebody either looked at them or didn't speak to them. They said, Pastor, you passed right by me and you didn't even speak to me. I just have to tell them, baby, I didn't even have you on my mind. I had something much bigger than what you're going through on my mind. As a matter of fact, when I passed by you, I didn't even see you. You were standing there. You need to be concerned at the fact that God 
The Almighty God sees you. Yeah, yeah. And that God reacts to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he keeps you. He keeps a hedge around you. Yes, sir. He, he protects you. Yeah. So and, right. and, and, and you know, even as Christians, we go places we shouldn't go. All right. We hang out with people we shouldn't hang out with. Right. In the name of witnessing to somebody. Say no. that. Say that. And God keeps us. He protects us. Back home, the senior saints would say it like this. He kept us through dangers seen and dangers unseen. When we were, fall, we were falling down, food's healed. And climbing back up, food's healed. God kept us. He blessed us. And, and you can't fool me like you've been missing Mrs. Goodish to you all your life. I know if you got red blood in your veins and you were born to a woman, you messed up some stuff. I know if you were born of a man or a woman, you got issues, and your issues deserve tissues, and because you messed up some stuff, you can't look down your nose at me. You need to look up at God. Yeah. 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 All right. yeah. And Isaiah chapter 6, mm. Isaiah declares that it was in the year that King Uzziah died yeah. that I also saw the Lord. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I saw him like never before. Yeah. I saw him high and lifted up. And the train of his garment filled the temple. And smoke clouded the room. A cloud haze sent it over the room until the Bible says that Isaiah saw the Lord and then he saw himself. Let me tell you, it won't be until you see the Lord that you see yourself. And then he says, I saw the Lord and I saw myself and then I saw my buddies also. All right. And then he says, not only did I see my buddies, I saw that I was messed up, I saw that they were messed up, but it wasn't until I saw the glory of God. All right. Yeah. Let me tell you, when you see the glory of God, uh -huh. you can see your faults. Right. But as long as you line yourself up, and as long as you compare yourself to the brother sitting next to you or the sister sitting behind you, you are all right. Matter of fact, you come to the conclusion that I'm much better than that person is. But when you look at Jesus, when you look at God, you understand that I'm messed up too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. I'm messed up. And because I'm messed up, I need to look to God. Uh, yeah. I need the Lord to bless me. Yeah. I need the Lord to keep me. Mm -hmm. I need the Lord to keep me focused. Yeah. I mean, that's a thing that go on in your week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that you say, Lord, just say, Lord, help us to keep going. Right. You, you, you ain't to dibble in the dabble in it, just say, Lord, help us. Right. Yeah. You, you ain't to comment on it, just say, Lord, help us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because only God can keep you in the midst of stuff. All right now. Yeah. He's our protector. He keeps us. He protects us. Verse 25 says that he, he makes his face to shine. He makes his face to shine upon us. His countenance, his glory is with us. Makes his face to shine upon us. In, in such a way, until we are, when we walk in a room, mm -hmm. folk know that we're different. Mm -hmm. They can't put their hands on it. Mm -hmm. They can't talk about it. But they know that you are different. All right. right. Now, there's an issue. Mm -hmm. If you walk in the room uh -huh. and they offer you a buck, uh -huh. there's an issue if you walk in the room and they get you to join in with them. But if they don't see a difference in you, that means the glory of the Lord is not with you. All right. That's why you have to be careful what you do, careful what you say, careful how you react, and careful how you act, because people are watching you. And the first time you slip in their presence, they're going to remind you, I thought you were a Christ. I thought you obeyed Christ. I thought that you were living for the Lord. Yeah, yeah. That's why Sister Power, I can't dance in public. Sister Power. <laughs> it doesn't mean that I ain't got no moves. It's just that I can't do it in public. Well, all right now. Because the moment I do it in public, Reverend Richard, the first time I do it in public. <laughs> Twitter is going to go crazy. Mm. Facebook going to have me do it. No, you're right. But I got some moves. And you're right about it. All right. 
And it doesn't mean because I make a move in the presence of other people that I'm in sin. It's just that I cannot afford to cause anybody else to yeah. suffer. Yeah. Right it doesn't mean that I can have a nip every now and then, and then folk walk away and say, oh, it's just the preacher. He, just, he deserves it. He's stressed out. <laughs> Preacher friend of mine, I'm not telling it on him because he posted it on Facebook. After the Cowboys lost out, he showed a picture of a brother sitting at a table with a glass in his hand with some gold liquid in it. And he said, y'all, pray for the preacher. <laughs> he was so upset that the Cowboys had lost. Until he insinuated mm -hmm. that it's time for him to get a drink. To get a drink. All right. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You need to stop being a fan. All right. If it drives you <laughs> to do what you normally don't do. All right. That's right. Another preacher, another preacher said to me, he said, oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to preach today. I said, what's the problem? Man, Michael Jackson died last night. He was so upset. Oh, the king died mm. until he couldn't see the king of kings. All right, all right. And, and you know, I didn't make it any better. I said, brother, I don't blame you. I turned my license in. Go tell my pastor I can't do this anymore because Michael, jo Michael Jackson died. You ought to turn your life into preacher. All right. <laughs> that allows stuff from folk entertainers to impact them that way. You don't have any business of mounting the pulpit. That's right. Because the people need a word from the Lord and they're depending on you to match them every Sunday. Yeah. And you talking about how Michael Jackson, did you not know that Michael going to pass away? Did you not know that your family members going to get out of here? You need to come to yourself and tell yourself, you are called to do something you got to keep doing. Right, right. He was still asking me over five years later, four and a half years later, how did you stand and preach your daddy's funeral? I don't know if I could have done that. First of all, you're not preached. Not right, right. Secondly, you're not called. Mm -hmm. And anybody that is not called will turn in their license, shake their head, and walk away. Because I don't ask this a part of my worship. Amen. You can't cuss folk out when they cuss you out. You can't fight them when they fight you. You can't fight with them as they fight with you. You just got to take it. Mm -hmm. And the folk expect you to really take it. Mm -hmm. You can't act like they act as, as if you just stepped down out of the clouds. They have forgotten that the preacher is here. Yeah, right and they forgot that the preacher has emotions. Yeah, yeah. They forgot that the preacher has feelings. Yeah. And they forgot that the preacher has feelings. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But they just said, <laughs> It's kind of like your your coworkers and your supervisors treat you because you you are a you are a, a Christ. You ought not be hanging out like that. You shouldn't be doing this. Well, you wouldn't know what I'm doing if you weren't with me while I'm doing it. Tell it, tell it. You know, I often wonder. I often wonder how people label people as things and and label them as somebody who let's just say sleep around. I, I often wonder how they know that that person does that because you would really have to be there while they're doing it in order to know that they do it. Because we put labels on people because of what we've heard in the wind. And let me tell you, the grapevine is not the truth. You, you hanging on the grapevine when you ought to be hanging on the truth vine, the yeah. word itself. God wants his face to shine upon you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants you to, to glow when you walk in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a sad thing when Christians go to church. Now, I can halfway see it when you're at work and in the neighborhood. But when they go to church looking like they've eaten persimmons, mm -hmm. looking like they've eaten green simmons, mm -hmm. looking like they have, have eaten a rotten potato, and they, they double down anybody to say anything to them. Some days during the fellowship, I look at a person, I say, oh, no, I don't want to go that way. <laughs> let me back up. Let me give them 50 feet. Let me let, me let them have their moment because, you know, some folk have their moments. Mm -hmm. And you just got to let them have their moments. Mm -hmm. 
And then they come back, they come back like nothing has ever happened. And therefore it leaves the preacher wondering which person showed up this morning. <laughs> God wants to shine. He wants to shine upon you and cause you to shine upon the people so you can be a living testimony of what God is doing in your life. You, you ought not show everything that's going up in your life in your face. Some folks want everybody to know, I'm just going through now. I, I really don't want to know that you're going through. That. Let's just go through. It's good to ask for prayer. It's good to have somebody to walk through trouble with you. But every person you meet, they don't want to feel the wrath of you going through. Make somebody like miserable just because you're going through. I'm going through now. <laughs> Folks have gotten fired from their job talking about they're going through. <laughs> that people have, have gotten dismissed from good job, good paycheck, good benefits, 401k, retirement, 403b. They have gotten left, they have left good job because they couldn't stand for somebody to say something to them or look at them the wrong way. <laughs> Let me tell you, you got to think further than today. That's right, right, that's right. And you got to let the Lord bless you. Right. God speaks well in darkness. God speaks clearly when you're going through. Oh, you're right. You just got to go through that's it. with the Lord. The second thing it says about his face shining upon you, it means that God's presence is there. Yeah, yeah. You, you need God's presence. You, you know, sometimes you don't need people to say something, you just need their presence. It's pretty annoying when somebody, family member, passed away. All these people that hadn't shown up in 20 years show up at the wake and at the funeral, and they want to tell you their life story of, of what they've gone through with this person that's deceased. Big Mama said it like this. If you can't come see me when I'm healthy, leave me alone when I get sick. All right. And she said, and whatever you do, don't show up at my funeral if you spent 10 years in Chicago and never show back up in Mississippi. Right. Right. We have to have things reasonably laid out in our lives. When we have friends, they are friends when we got it and when we don't have it. That's right. That's right. But we like to come with the crowd. We like to be there when the crowd shows up so we can say we were there and in the number. We want this t-shirt and the hat that says, I was there. God wants you to shine, and he wants you to be all you can be, even in good times as well as bad. Yes, sir. God wants you to shine. He wants his presence to be with you, and so you can be in his presence and exude his presence upon the lives of the Show you right. I want you to, I want to be gracious to you. Word gracious mean I, I want to show you favor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God is looking for somebody in this room where God can show favor yeah, yeah. to other people on your behalf. All right. God wants to show you favor so much so we need to understand that God wants to open doors that have been closed for many years in our faith. Yeah, yeah. No legislature is going to open the door. They're just going through the motions up there. Right. Nobody's going to do anything for you other than God. And if you trust God to do it, God wants to give you favor so he can get the glory. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. This, word, this word gracious means that he wants to show you favor. As a matter of fact, this word gracious means to stoop and to bend. This word gracious in the Hebrew term means to stoop down and to bend over. This word gracious in Hebrew means this all-sufficient, self-existing God is willing to stoop down for you, stoop down to you, bend over on your behalf, and bless you in the presence of your enemies. Yes, sir. I'm telling you that God wants to stoop. God wants to bend. God wants to stoop down, bend over, and bless you. And you telling God, no, I ain't got time for that. People who don't read their word don't have time for God to bless them. All right. People who don't come to church don't have time for God to bless them. People who don't value church, don't value God, they don't have time for God to bless them. Let me tell you, when you make sacrifices for God in obedience unto him, he will bless you and give you favor so much so that he will bend over and bend down and bless you. He bend over and bend down and bless you. I'm so glad that every now and then 
God is willing to bend over for me. He, he's willing to stoop down for me. He's willing to bend with me. God ain't never been. Let me just tell you, that job you have that you falsified your resume on, God been over to you. The job that you have that they gave it to you and you wasn't qualified for it, God stooped down for you. The lie that you stole, you told, God took care of you in the midst of the lie because he is God. You see, God, God, God doesn't just bless us because of our determination. Or because of our deeds. He doesn't bless us because of our devotion. And certainly if God blessed you based on your, your devotion, you will be in the streets. If God blessed you based on how many people you've led to Christ, you would be unemployed. No, you're right. If God blessed you based on how many people you introduced to the concept of church, you wouldn't have a job. All right. If God blessed you based on who you are, where you've been, how you act, you wouldn't be blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But thank God that he doesn't bless us based on our deeds all the time. Yeah. Many times he blessed us based on his grace and his mercy. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't deserve to get up this morning, but God gave right. grace and God gave mercy. Yeah. He bent down with kindness yeah. to us. Yeah. Yes, he did. He's been gracious. Been gracious to us. God has been gracious to us. Yes, sir. And we can't give him five hours a week. Five hours. We can't give him an hour and a half on Sunday. And he gives us 168 hours a week. You do the math. We, we can't give him three hours a week. We can't give him an hour and a half a week. And you're right about And we always have an excuse for what we gotta do. But we've spent all this time, 168 hours, doing our own things. Yeah. And want to use the excuse, well, God rested on the seventh day. Well, you should have rested yesterday because this is the first day of the week. Amen. It is. And the Bible says that God worked well on the first day. That's right. So the seventh day is Saturday. Mm -hmm. So tell your boss, I'm going to rest this day. <laughs> I'm going to rest this day because this is the seventh day of the week. I'm going to rest this day. A lady in Miami, Florida decided that she wasn't going to work on Sunday because church was too important to her to miss church on Sunday. All right. So she, she had the support of her supervisor. For 14 years, her supervisor allowed her to be off every Sunday. But the supervisor changed. A new supervisor came on the scene. And when the new supervisor came on the scene, she decided that she was going to fire her because she refused to work on Sunday. She won a court case. Hundreds of thousands of dollars for, race, for, for, for religious discrimination. You see, Jehovah's Witnesses and Seventh-day Adventists get away with it all the time. But we as Christians are not bold enough yeah. and not devoted enough yeah. to do what we have to do yeah. to let God bless us. Yeah. Oh, you're right. yeah. See, because they see crisis, and when they see crisis, what they do with crisis is they watch you. Yeah. And you ask for Sunday off, but you don't go to church. Yeah. But this lady was devoted to church services on Sunday. All right. And she didn't worry about what they were going to do to her. And she didn't worry about where her money was going to come from. She knew that God put a hedge of protection around her because she stood for God. And it cost the company hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I text Pastor Gaston. And I asked Pastor Gaston, is this your member? Because I'm sure praying that she's a member of your church. Because every church needs a member who's devoted to the Lord like this member is. And then I text him, I said, not only would she be a good member to have sitting in the pews and serving on Sunday, uh, the payday that she just got would help your church out to a minute. 
So Pastor Jackson Smith texted me back and said, no, unfortunately, she's not. <laughs> it's because God wants to bless somebody so they can be a living testimony for others to see. God wants to bless you. And the devil will always try your conviction. You say you are Christ. You say you go to church. You say you're going to be faithful to God in 2020. The question is, are you really faithful? Oh, yeah. And if you're really faithful, God will bless you. If you're really content with who God is, God will bless you. And you. You don't have to do gimmicks to get God's blessing. He, he's willing to bow down. He's willing to bend over. He's willing to stoop down and bless you. And you just have to be committed to him. He is gracious. Verse 26, number 6 says, The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Hebrew terms means to kindle a fire. It means to stir you up. It means to pardon you and to raise you up. This lift up your, your, his, his countenance, it, it means to stir up a fire. God wants to stir up a fire with us. God wants us to be on fire for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God wants us to be on fire for him. It doesn't matter who we date, we're still on fire. Doesn't matter who we're married to, we're still on fire. Yeah. All right. Doesn't matter how many children we have, we're still on fire for the Lord. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I, 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 in, in, in all my days, I've never seen children that get left home on Sunday. Mm. When we, we grew up, it was uh -huh. Sunday morning, mm. BTU. Yeah. Then BTU, then T on next Sunday, and we ate at the church, and we spent right, time at the man. church, and, right. and even on record hop night, we were prepared for <laughs> Y'all don't know what record hops are. Even on record hop nights, and that's when the teenagers get together, and they do their little, little yeah. record hop, and they, they go, they party me while they're being yeah. supervised. On record hop night, we were getting ready for Sunday school on Saturday night. That's right. Yeah. I came out all right. I don't have any mental issues that, that I know of. We have to understand that we have to teach our children to be committed to God because they're going to start up fools here later. And what we put in them early in their lives will reach out and touch them later. Whenever your child is up fools here, you need to ask yourself, did you put Christ in his or her life? Did you make a difference in his or her life? So much so that they'll come to themselves one day. When you look at Luke chapter 15, there's a man, there's a man there that has two sons. The youngest son went and found himself in a hog field. He's about to eat the hog flock. He spent all his daddy had given him. And the Bible says one day when there was a famine, he came to himself. Keep praying for your children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep praying for them. You understand when you pray for them, acknowledge before God that they climbing up food. Yeah. God, this is the problem. <laughs> this joker is acting like a joker now. All right. He or she are not doing what you called them to do. Lord, I have put it in them. I have prayed your word over them. I put the word in them. Now, Lord, you reach out and grab them. Your child is coming up food here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And watch what God does. Yeah. He may not come when you want, but he's always. Show you right. He's always on time. Yes, he is. He want to raise up and he want to pardon you. Yeah. Why would God need to pardon us? It's because we all just right. We, yeah. we all have had, we've had our moments. If, yeah. if you're over two, you had your moments. Right. Even the baby in the back, they have their moments. Mm -hmm. they, 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 are, they are pretty and they're real cuddly, but they got red blood. That's why. Yeah, yeah. And when they come out with red blood, it's an indication that they are Adam and Eve's children. All right. And they just like us, they love sin. Mm -hmm. You know, some some you know grandparents are worth worth, oh my baby, oh, this baby is so smart and so pretty, and they can spoil their children, but you need to understand that you need to teach them now how to obey now because they're coming the day when they're gonna tell you what to do and you don't have to obey. All right. Ooh, yeah, cold turkey, yeah, but it's yeah. good when you're hungry. Mm -hmm. And give you peace. 
This word peace, Hebrew word is, is shalom. This word peace means that God wants to give you a fulfilled life. God wants to give you the abundant life. He wants to give you the victory in yeah. everything you're going through. Yeah. All right. Let me tell you, if you have a career, you ought to be the one that stands out for the Lord. You ought not go on your job during that 8 to 12 hour period reading your Bible. You ought to go on your, God, your job being a godly example of what God has put in you because you read your Bible before you went in the door. Because you read your Bible after you got off the work, then God is wanting you to live it out. He wants you to live it out in front of other folks. You, you read your Bible on your time, not their time. Because you're a walking, living testimony. For God and so for others to see. He wants to lift you and give you victory. He wants to make sure that you have peace, the fullness of your life. And finally he says, so that they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. When God talks about his name, he talks about his character. All right. You need to make sure that you paint God as one with character. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Your reputation is one thing. Mm -hmm. That's what people say about you. Mm -hmm. But your character yeah. is another thing. All right. I pray, I pray that the New Beginning Church members, uh, when they hear some stuff in the street on me, they can say, no, he wouldn't do that. All right. That's not his character. I know there are some shocking things that happen out there every day. I know there are some shocking things that, that people go through every day, but, but that ought not be my character. All right. You ought to be able to say, no, his character just doesn't line up with that. No, that's not the man I know. You didn't protect me. You didn't say I wouldn't do it. You're just saying that's not my character. That's not who you know. That's not who I am. And Lord, I wish, I hope, I pray that I have members of the New Beginning Church that I can stand up in court in behalf of and say, Your Honor, Prosecutor, to the witnesses and the jury, this is not this man or this woman's character. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now, they may have done it, but I'm telling you, it's not their character. All right. The evidence is stacked, but it's not their character. The, the situation against them, I know you have video, I know you have pictures, I know you have photos, and the video shows that they were there and they were doing it, but I'm telling you, it's not their character. Yeah. All right. right but what is worth your honor, that's not the person I know. Mm -hmm. All right. And you won't believe how far mm -hmm. that will take you. Okay. Now, there are some members of New Beginning Church mm -hmm. that when they ask me to show up in court, Lord, help me to hold out. Lord, when they talk about commitment, Lord, have mercy. When it talks about devotion, God, have mercy. When it talks about preaching their funeral, do I just stand and I talk about Jesus? Or can I tell a world that this person has toned the line? This person has walked with God. Or do I have to even contemplate doing like some priests? All right. When you're living, they lie on you. When you're dead, they lie for you. I want to tell you that God is responsible to us if we watch our character. Right now. And we are responsible to God. Because the final verse, verse 27 says that God is concerned not just about your character. He's concerned about his character. All right. Yeah. What this, this really is saying right here in verse 27 is that Jesus has the character. Mm -hmm. You do know that the Old Testament talks about Jesus 
in the New Testament talks about Jesus. What it's saying when it says the glory of Israel, Jesus Christ is the glory of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Not only is he the king, he is the king of kings. He's the coming Messiah that has already showed up. His name is Jesus. Yes. All right. Yeah. It is Jesus that paid the price for us. It was Jesus that died for us. It was Jesus they laid in a barbecue. He is the glory of Israel. And that's because he died and he rose. That's why I'm blessed and I'm high to faith. It's nothing that I did. It's nothing that I tried to do. It's not because I'm so smart. It's because of Jesus that I'm blessed and high to faith. I'm blessed and high to faith because over 2,000 years ago, my Lord and my God, Jesus himself, he died on the storm hill cross. It's because of Jesus who they hung high. Jesus, they rough low. Jesus, they stretched wide. Jesus, they nailed tight. Jesus, they gave his back to the cross. Jesus died that day. Yes, he did. They took him off the cross, laid him in a barber tomb. And on that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth. Yes. It is that Jesus that has made me who I am. I'm only highly blessed. I'm only highly famous because of Jesus. There may be somebody here today that have not been introduced to this Jesus. The Jesus that we talk about. The All Jesus right. that we sing about. The Jesus who, who we scream about. The Jesus that we shout about. That Jesus. There may be somebody here today that has never received him as your personal Savior. This is your moment. You ought to try him. You ought to try him for yourself. That same Jesus that died on the stud here All right. Calvary. All right. The same Jesus that died on the cross. The same now, Jesus come on now. that was laid in a barbed tomb. The yes, same sir. Jesus that rose that third day morning. He's here today. That's him. He wants to save you. He wants to give you shalom. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give us a new hope. And a new end. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You know, come to Jesus. Just as you are. The door is open. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just that. Brother Williams. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. If you're here today and you are in between church homes, or you don't have a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church. The door is open. Will you come? If you're here today and you need prayer, I recommend that you come to prayer and the church will pray with you and pray for you. The door is open. Just trust him. Just trust him. Just trust him. Just trust him. contribute to our church, you can do so by our cash app. Our cash tag is cash tag NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. Thank you. God bless you. God keep you. It's our prayer. Well, we thank God for who he is and what he's already done.